Okay, first you want to open the keyboard drawer by using the push button drawer release. Uh, that'll allow the drawer to fall down or slide down and then you can access the mounting screws. There are two just inside the rails and then two along the top edge. After removing the screws, you lean the back cover forward and unplug the keyboard connector. And then you will lift the back cover up to clear the lower lip before removing it from the console. When installing the remote jog, the first thing you want to do is just set it into the cradle to keep it from being damaged and then insert the strain relief into the slot in the console with the rounded edge forward so that the flat edge is along the bottom opening and then route your cable inside of the frame of the console and secure to the timeout strips route the cable underneath the bundle of wires to keep the wire bundle as flat as possible and then you'll plug it into J30 on the console board. The wireless remote option, you get a radio, a harness, and a carrier board that needs to be mounted inside of the console. You begin by plugging the harness into the carrier module, and then plugging the other end into J34 on the console. Then want to mount the carrier board on the console using the four screws provided. And secure the harness with the tie, zip tie mounts inside of the frame. Before installing the labels, you need to remove the override and the selector knobs and then select the proper overlay, overlay labels for the installation. First you need to remove the protective film on the back that's covering the adhesive. And this smallest label goes above the keys on the remote jog. There's a little indentation to help with alignment set it into the indentation, and then press into place. After selecting the proper remote jog label, again remove the protective film on the back, and place it into position. Once positioned, start in the center of the label, working your way outward to press the adhesive into place and to eliminate bubbles underneath the label. Make sure to go to around all the keys to ensure proper adhesion. Again, select the proper label for the console and remove the protective film from the rear. As with the other pieces, the console has an indentation to help with alignment of the label around the keys and encoders. Place the label carefully so that it does not get stuck in the wrong 
orientation and check the alignment before starting in the center of the label and working your way out between the keys. Be sure to, to spend proper attention at the ends of the key rows around the plastic features to make sure the label is pressed down fully. And again, work out any air bubbles underneath the label. With the labels installed, you need to reinstall the knobs. And you'll notice a flat spot on the shafts, and this is where the set screw will press against to secure the knob. The console overrides have a push button function so extra clearance is needed underneath the knobs. Place a two millimeter wrench under the edge before, as you install the knobs to allow for the clearance. Once in place, secure the set screw. Afterwards, remove the 2mm wrench and check for proper push-button functionality and proper turning without, without binding. On the remote jog, again, the axis selector will have a flat spot for the set screw. If it's a premium or wireless remote, the override will require the two millimeter clearance for the push button function. So again, use the two millimeter wrench under the edge to allow for the proper clearance. If it's a basic model, it will have a pot and will not need the extra clearance. And align the set screw with the flat area on the post and tighten to secure. After installing the labels, you need to install the override guard with the bend in the downward position. Place the override guard into the holes in the front of the console and secure with Phillips screws that are included in the back. The screw holes are located along the top corners of the console board. With the labels and the guard installed, it's time to replace the back cover. There's a lip along the bottom edge that needs to be placed in first. Then route the keyboard connector underneath the bundle of wires and reinsert into the USB connector on the console board. Tilt the back cover into position and secure with the four millimeter uh, bolts. The two along the top edge will be the easiest ones to start first. To fully close the 
back cover, you may need to apply a little pressure due to the wire and the wiring bundle underneath it. Pressing on the keyboard rail will allow you to the bolts to engage and hold the cover closed.